What's up, gamers? So remember how last week uh, I was looking into how one unlocks songs and squid beats? Because there were some that were just, you know, question marks. Well, unfortunately, it does turn out that a lot of them are just unlocked or unlocked by uh, amiibos. So it's uh, obviously a bit of a costly purchase. However, fortunately, I did find that uh, I have not scanned a few of these guys in. And I would like to uh, extend my gratitude to Orange Inkling Girl for providing us with the song we're listening to right now. Uh, we also got Hooked, which is a Splatoon 1 song as well. And I think uh, it wasn't Shipwreck. What was the other one? Splatack. There we go. We got this one as well. So, there we go. Jamie uh, won the first war, by the way, just in case that was unclear. Thought you missed it. Well, you haven't. Yep, we've got Ballpoint. It's happened a couple of times so far on stream. Bring a few of my amiibos that I switched between to the land, so you'll be able to get some of those too. Do you... Uh, do you not lose the ability to, like, have them on your Switch when you use it on your own? Like, are you able to just, like, give me one and it unlocks stuff for me? That would be neat. All right. Huh. All right. Well, cool. Might be able to showcase some of the other ones then. I'm just really glad I got Shelfie. Shelfie's a banger. Shelfie is like top notch, top shelf Splatoon music. It's absolutely awesome. Alrighty. So as you can see, I was uh, trying a few things out here and there. I'm gonna jump into Discord and uh, pull up uh, Cryo, who's our, our VOD reviewee, and Devi. Welcome, Cryo and Debbie. Oh, We're on stream hi. now. Hello, hello. hello. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh, I'm so scared. All right. Uh, I'm going to set a password here really quick. We did add a, a whole bunch of people on the last stream. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yeah. My friendship thing list, it, it needs more space. <laughs> Yeah, they need to increase that at some point here. 300 is, is not enough. That or, you know, hopefully the next game has room codes like Ultimate does, and that might help a bit. All right. Cryo, I have DM'd you the password. Debbie, it's the same one it always is. Okay. Um, and <laughs> if uh, Jamie or Bab would like to hop in, I'd be happy to have any of you guys around. First one to guess the password wins. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Were you were you fiddling with ballpoint and like? Yeah, I was. I was checking <laughs> ranges. What zones? Huh? Zones. Hmm. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Oops. Is this what I ran on it? I don't think this is what I ran on it. I think I ran this on it. And then... Yeah, I think that was how it went. I also uh, just got, you know, the new Amiibo gear. So I've got my uh, power armor now. Oh, Samurai nice. I got, jacket. I got all those too. It's nice to have all the gear. I'm wearing the Amiibo exclusive shirt right now. I like it a lot. Awesome. I just, I use mine to switch between Inkling and Octoling, Ooh, and I haven't been able to fancy. for a while, so. Look at how fancy these shoes are. Hot diggity dang. Uh, one second. How do I join you? I haven't done this before. Um, so you're going to go to League Battle, 
And oh, league battle, not private battle. Okay. Join me <laughs> there. Yeah. Uh, or friends is usually the fastest way to find someone. Um, it's from that list. You can see wherever they are, what they're playing. Got it. All right, here, Bab. I got you. I have DM'd you, Bab. I'm glad it just happened to be splat zones on this time, because this is probably my best mode out of all the others. Is anyone seeing anything weird on stream? It's giving me a message that says to check my encoder settings about the keyframe interval. And I don't really know what that means. But uh, if it's causing something funky to happen, then maybe I should change it to the recommended setting it gave me. I mean, it buffers for me every here and there, but I don't know if that's my computer or if that's the stream. For now. <laughs> Hi, Annie. Um. Oh, where are you at? Is uh, Bab going to be coming, or oh, should oh, I... Uh... Okay. Oh, there's yeah. Babs. Perfect. All right. All right, this is a weird and wild and wacky comp. Let's, let's run it. <laughs> oh, my. You know what? Actually, I think I'll... I can go zap if we are worried about pain. Hang on. You're gonna switch no, I've got this. Hang on. What a meeting yeah. with it. This one, I think. <laughs> Close enough. All right. <laughs> All right, yeah. I can see this working. We've got beacons, uh, I mean, and then everyone else is, is the murder squad. Beacons. <gasps> Where did my leather jacket go? There it is. Well, thank you. Stephen Curry himself, the world-famous basketball player, is in our YouTube chat <laughs> saying... <laughs> It's great to see people like you making good content. Something the community needs more of. I appreciate that, Steph Curry. Okay, we'll roll with this. Jamie could not remember the pass. <laughs> Dang it. Okay, so nobody else knows this pass. Which is a good thing. Which. <laughs> It has been leaked before. It's not exactly it the most uh, airtight of passwords. <laughs> oh, the double armor. Oh, I could have ran something else. Oopsies. Pabs is like, I do now, going mad with power. And now we're just gonna, <laughs> chat is just gonna try and brute force the password. This is gonna be our chat. It's just gonna be a, a progression of four digit numbers. Hmm, it's and 9876. Is it 000? zero, 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 zero? Eventually, they'll guess every possible combination, right? So, like, if I start saying, oh, no, it's not that one, then they're going to be like, okay, well, what about this one? Well, what about this one? And by process of elimination, they will get rid of all of the four-digit numbers. All 10,000 of them. I guess if you count zero as a four-digit number, which maybe you should. Oh my goodness. Okay, so Game audio is I guess loud. it would be... I guess it would be 8,000. There's a math major who's cringing inside at my attempts to figure this out. And their name is Aplo. No. Um, oh, several their ledge. Okay. So we are going to be down. I guess we're going in. Not really. A two. Oh, wow. Painting zone. Oh, that's a Hydra. You yeah, know, it's Hydra's on flat. They're oh, out I of, got it. Uh, yeah, nice. <laughs> I was going to say, they're out of charge in like two seconds. Oh, someone right below here in my paint. Nice. Uh, try coming up to their flat. 
Hydra directly above me. Got him. Dropping flat is one. Bombs away. Hydra's out of uh, charge. Oh, I almost had that third slush. Uh, Mini looking at their ledge. I am trying to paint for my life. The Hudra and a mini. Got one. I broke the Hydra's armor. You got this, Jerry. Got Hydra. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm surprised I missed as many sloshes as I did at the end there, but you know what? It worked out. <laughs> Anyone else got Kirby? Says Yoshi fan. <laughs> I actually don't have the new Kirby. I have uh, not messed around with it, but Donkey said good things about it. Which means that uh, it's a lot closer to a Mario game than past Kirby's have been. That's my read on <laughs> Donkey. If it has Mario in the name, it can do no wrong. <laughs> Bab's working really hard to make that wordplay work. Uh -uh. Six nine six nine, can't you tell? Ah, oh, dang it, they got it. No. Um, thanks for making such great tutorials. Probably the only reason I got back into Splatoon and getting X right. Well, thank you. I appreciate you saying so. This is the funkiest mini look ever, but wizard boots. <laughs> Kirby didn't work at changing the subject. What? <laughs> <laughs> wow, chat really did actually start trying to brute force that number, didn't they? Yeah, they really did. Oh, I totally forgot about the 96. Hydra's tapped. Ooh, they're pushing me from glass. Oh boy, there are three on the right, one left. Got one. Uh, another one's weak. I am three times. Nice. Bab. One our ledge, mini. Oh, hi there. One on glass as well, 96. Aim aimed left. Sad face. Alright, let's get the party started. Watch out for tri flank. Yep, there it is. On the ledge. Hydra I'm ledge. Here. Glass there now. Oh, oh. It was actually on the right. Got the the mini. Hydra. The Hydra's on the right. Yeah, it was the mini I was chasing. Yeah. Hydra. Oh, I got three shots, but they got me. Three on their plat. They're jumping into it. Blink. Oh, the 96 range beats me. I'm getting flanked by the tri slasher, I think. Got the 96. I'm down on zone. Uh, one of them dropped. Yeah. Mini coming left glass. Okay, one far right. One on the ledge left. Let's try and use this rain. Okay, tries left. Two on the right, three on the right. And there's another flank. 
Got Thank em. you. Uh, Hydra on right. They oh. popped armor. They're coming in from their ledge. I'm down. There's a flank somewhere. I think. Yeah, it's underneath on the right. It's a mini flank. Popping missiles. Two left. One there far forward right and one behind us. Mini is down. Bomb rushing zone. Ow. Yeah, we have no Got one with there. bomb rush. Hydra, they're plat. Three, they're plat. They popped armor. Ah, they're weak. Ah, shoot, you can't get them. Try to keep zone, though. Nice, one their ledge. Weak our ledge. They dropped. Oh no. They're coming watch around out, left. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Or right. Nah, I've got to back up. There's one right above you, Jim. You're going to get pinched if you stay. I'm good. There's two on flat. I have bomb rush ready to go. There might be um, one on right. Try to Trying Try to get missiles. Try weak. Got him. Can't have missiles. Three zone. We got to go. We got to go. Bomb rushing. Oh, no. Hydra weak. Got him. Another one on me. One my... 96. I got... They I dropped traded with the, the right side. Good zone. One coming up. Coming left, left class. Oh, Try flank. flank. Try down. Ninety six right flat, watching it. Hydra left glass. I tagged them. Oh, mini flank, mini flank. <coughs> what side? Oh, okay. Literally directly below us, but I didn't see where they went. I wasn't sure whether it was right or left. I had no idea either, so I couldn't tell you. Uh, we need to go for the zone. I'm dead. There's one down, try one. behind. Try dropped. Alright. Quick technical timeout. Yo, it's Joe Biden himself. Man, we, we get all the celebrities on YouTube. Alright. I will be back in time. Uh, d like, you don't need to, like, drop out of the lobby or anything. Just let the time run. Okay. All right, I'm ready. And Bab, also, uh, if you would like, feel free to hop into Discord, and we'll just drag you up. You don't have to say anything if you don't want to, but you'll be able to hear our, our call-outs that way. Unless you like the extra challenge of having to listen to the call-outs with stream delay. The good hats are hiding. There it is. Barack Olama, that's amazing. 
<laughs> one of my favorite genres of uh, League of Legends summoner name was including a, a League of Legends champion's name into somebody else's tag. So, for example, Morgana Freeman was, oh. was one that we saw. Um, Michael Jackson. Uh, J-A-X. Uh. There, there have been uh, several of that nature, and those are always amusing. Yes, Donkey Wonker, it turns out, goes by Cryo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and there's Bab. Hi, Bab. Hi, Bab. Did Debbie make... Did I say... Was I... Oh, a plot. me? Never mind, I was talking to Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? What are you... What am I doing? Come on. <laughs> you sent me a map, and I was wondering if you made it. Like the map, like the route tower on Antrobe. Oh, no, you made it. Not. Jamie made it. Sorry for wow. interrupting your conversation. <laughs> Probably should have popped in and been like, hey, I'm dragging you up now. <laughs> God, I guy hate Gabby. She's so mean to me. I am so evil. <laughs> I don't have the right gear, so... Just love. Uh, several on right. What happened, Ren? Uh oh. I missed? It's just Debbie. Oh, uh, I, I tried to help. I didn't know where and the last one was. Side. Well, several of them rushed right, and then when there was nobody left on right, they just came to you. Oh. I had a panic moment. Yeah, you had a lot going on over there. Okay. Let's make sure the E-Leader can't get up on uh, top mid here. I'm gonna Booyah their... Our zone? Our zone. Okay. E-Leader's back one there, below me. Got one. Rushing Leader. There's a jump Got to him. them. Nice, they're down. <laughs> leader, their ledge. Gem, why didn't you paint the zone? <laughs> I got the leader. I'm, I'm murdering, okay? You, you could have just like killed me and I would have capped his own game. I got three. I got Let's go. <laughs> That'd be cool. All right, we still we still do need to get our zone though. Oh, this one. Oh, there was a flank. Oh, I see. This this one so on right. Oh, I mean, I'm missing all my shots. I'm the, only the best. one who could help you. But yeah, we're really we're really staggered right now. Careful. This. I can't reach that high. Watch RT, watch RT, right yep. below you, Jim. They're coming up to me. Leader's watching me. Bab, I'm with you. No, that's not Bab, never mind. I Cryo, I'm feel with you. Like some chargers watching me. Please. No Please. I'm dead. There's two on our base. Uh, Where are yeah, they? Yeah, well, we're just. We're in half they're pipe right now, but, Oh, they're top mid. Oh, I'm I gonna, didn't get him. Man. I we had their zone. We need to at least neutralize our zone. Got, I didn't get the leader? Roller, oh, oh, this is a... Nice. <laughs> 30. Um, uh, we can get zone really quickly here. I'm painting so well. <laughs> uh, I'm getting rushed on right. I'm down. Uh, is one pushing donkey on left? Uh, I know, I'm trying, but I couldn't get there in time. Oh, they have armor. I can't do anything here. Uh, warm up. I was warm up. <laughs> Let's go, Debbie. I had a game. <laughs> we should team more. I didn't realize you were playing Dynamo, to be honest. I was too focused on how bad my gear was. <laughs> I was so. gonna go uh, heavy deco, but then I'm like, but black belly. Maybe I can do something. Mm. And even when we get Wahoo, I'll play funky with the dynamo. <laughs> Hang on, I'm just, I'm still playing dynamo, but. Um, it's 
swapping to Inkling because I have a hat. So. It's gonna be a zombie outbreak on the moon soon. We're, we're just hearing from chat. Breaking news. Oh. That's also, so cool. hi, Octocat. I know I'm late on that, but welcome. So, the whole... Where I live right now is prepping for a fourth winter. Like... It's actually a fourth one. A fourth winter <laughs> this year. <laughs> yep, because it's been it's been warm and snow has melted, and then we get a blizzard, and then it would do it again. So this is the fourth rerun of this. But that apparently, just sounds this like blizzard spring is supposed to, to be me. bad. I don't know. Yo, guys, winter four just dropped. <laughs> winter four. <laughs> That's what it is in this province. The long-awaited sequel. Four. Yeah. New winter. So... Okay, that's one down. Hi. We can out paint. Yeah, there's another one. Nice. I missed. Can you rushing the leader? Me. You're not rushing them, you're lying. You're lying. I said pressuring them. Oh. So I can't. Hitboxes? Oh my god. Two below me. I'm coming to save you. There Don't you worry about it. It's okay. I booyahed them. I oh, I have missiles on me, Bab. Watch out. Thanks, Bab. I appreciate the help. Of course. <laughs> Two above me. I got one. Got one. Am I getting booyahed out? That, that's on me. Ah. Okay, shot. I <laughs> traded. Really nice. Just leader. Make sure to keep zone painted. I think leader's right. You have to game in. They're all coming right. Beacon. One, one or ledge. One or ledge. Or their ledge. Sorry. <laughs> that was probably a little bit more frightening than it needed to be. It's okay, I didn't believe you. Oh Got no! Oh, no. Oh. oh, hi! Hitboxes. I sparked them! <laughs> I, I suck! There's one on our left, by the way. Ah, they found me. I guess I probably should have thrown it. I'm just gonna oh. wait a second. Never mind, they're just not gonna come here. Okay. Come to. Come play. Right. Oh, I'm no. gonna try to go in from left. I'm gonna. Wait, wait, wait. Ooh, you left me. Oh, I hit him. I'm dead. Aha! Booyah bumping. I'm gonna booyah their, our right side. There's two. There's two on right glass. They should both go down to I that. got nice. him. Oh. <laughs> just leader, just leader. leader. Paint zone, paint zone. Leader is still. Someone's on that ledge. Yeah, one right flat. Leader and oh, someone else. They poked me. I should have died to that. Oh, there's a K shot coming this way. Yeah, one left glass. Um, they're down. Nice. Another one on me. I got him once. I'm down. On left. Left glass. Left glass. <laughs> they weren't low. I sparked when they didn't die at them. I, I hit them once. That's all I said. 28 oh. damage. <laughs> Here. I got one in Booyah Bomb. Two are left ledge. And one zone. Two on our plat. Probably gonna drop in a sec. Yeah, two left, one zone. Uh, so they're, they're, not, they're not going for it. Oh, they just moved right. Okay. Bab, there you go. I'm the best. I'm with you. Watch out for bombs. One on Flanking. our ledge, still. I'm not. Oh, got me right glass. Jump into their ledge. Ah, uh, no. This is a bad jump, isn't it? No, I'm good. <gasps> Got one. Painting zone. First one. They're both on my How do we not have cap? What the heck? Holy moly, I... okay. <gasps> Rain! Rain! No! E-leader on left. Not for long. Oh, never mind. They got away. Please There's someone behind me, though. Oh, dear. I am apparently frontlining. Yeah, I, I was. I was like, man, Debbie's up further than the rest of us. I I kept them off zone. I can't. Really cool. Oh, this jump might. Ugh. I'm good. On zone is one. Bomb what rushing. am I doing? I killed the leader. I need paint. Uh. We are bombing. Two on zone. One trying to shred me. Two, two ledge. Two ledge. Two ledge. I got one. Down um, the ledge. 
Yeah, we were like, already oh, two down, I think, by the time the Booyah went out. Oh, whatever. Oh, I'm here. No, they went behind me! I didn't see where they went! No! <laughs> no longer here. They stole Alright, regroup, second. regroup. Wait to go in. Uh-oh. There's one behind our pillow. What? I don't think I'm sorry, Got one. There's two on me. Got cap. Oh, We're getting back. This one's weak. Nice. This one's weak. Flick. Paint. Yay. Oh, that's a leader. <laughs> I'm, I didn't die. I'm... That's We're a gonna leader. push. <laughs> Paint gamers. Got one. There's one left. Leader's forced out. There's two left. There's two left. There's two Focus left. Focus zone. Oh, Bab, I'm behind you. Watch out. There's a lot oh of us my. here. Oh, no. Paint through, paint through, paint through. Crying! I fell. No! I didn't have a swing off anyway. <laughs> oh, they booyahed at a good time. I like Dynamo. You need a DC? Someone DC? I've been watching uh, Terran play as Dynamo a lot, so I've been inspired. <laughs> it is big stick. Very fun. Hit squid with. Oh, wait. I think I need to go. Oh, okay. Sorry. No worries. We'll still play a couple more. Hey, Jamie, you want to hop in? I can get you the uh, password in the DMs. Also, welcome, Jim Bob Dean. Jamie reacted in chat, so I'm assuming that he'll be in here soon. I can uh, also pull him up from waiting room once he's uh, got all that figured out. Hello, Jamie. Hello. So he is being rough right now. <laughs> What's the map mode? Uh, TC Skipper, uh, Trigger. Okay. I, this is a controversial opinion, but I don't think that's too bad. I, a lot of people oh, no, wouldn't it's... like, uh, Triggerfish Tower, but I think it's actually one of the stronger Triggerfish modes. Yeah, no, it's not the map that I'm having, uh, issue with. It's the, uh, people. <laughs> <laughs> Humanity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Humanity is a group of individuals that is frequently problematic. <laughs> yes. Jamie, did anyone give you the password yet? Yes, Jim did. Okay. Sorry, I was getting out. I was getting out of said match. Yeah, this looks good. Um, so we'll just play like three. Uh, if we go to power, it's gonna take a long time take and. A uh, while. Yeah, the uh, VOD reviews have been going long lately, so... Uh, might want to pare it down a little bit. Triggerfish Tower if you like swimming. I, I will never forget this uh, Tetris clip a friend of ours had where uh, she rolled off the tower or sorry do dodge rolled off of uh mid the bridge there but saw that the tower was moving backward toward her pops splash down and being up in the air gives the tower enough time to get underneath her and she lands on the tower and saves herself absolutely legendary moment one pushing left i'm getting them or not. Uh... I'm gonna beat him. 
Okay, uh, one on left right. snipe. Oh, we're two down. We're two down. We're three down. Oh yeah. dear. I I'm stuck. I'm just stuck. You could jump out. <laughs> I'm gonna now. <laughs> so I can't even throw a half pipe. Oh, well. Yeah, they're they... at, our, at like our hill or something. Oh, I found them with my face. Hello there, Nexus. Oh. oh, there's two in our street. Alright, be safe, be safe. Don't drop in yet. I'm okay. already there. I have armor? Have you tried not? <laughs> what do you mean? I'm doing just fine. Uh. I got one. Alright, alright, alright. I'll give you that. There's a baller on our zone. I'm. Oh, there's one behind us. RT. Uh, okay, I see it. There's another one, our mini. They pinched. Oh. Don't drop in, don't oh. drop in. It was where my jump went. I was trying to play around uh, Cryo there. Well, we're yeah. not getting unzoned. <laughs> uh. Alrighty, so let's talk about staggering. <laughs> I tried to play around cryo, and then the way my jump went, it's like, yeah, it's gonna put. See, me what you want to play around is the fact that you have two teammates who are dead. <laughs> Why were you dead? <laughs> uh, actually, legit, because I was trying to go in and help you when you got stuck on the left. <laughs> I was just trying to do something. <laughs> But, <laughs> moral of the story is... Uh, Noted. Don't do that. <laughs> paint for special. <laughs> if we don't have numbers advantage, especially if, you know, there are calls that people are going around on flanks and stuff, just just sit up on top and paint, and uh, we'll get specials, and then we'll be able to push in that way. What happened with mm -hmm. the left is that I initially went to help you. I did get that one that got you, but then... Uh, Everyone else was already dead at that point. Everyone was dead. And then I tried to jump out and I hit Booyah. <laughs> so I'm like, um, now I'm just going to Booyah bomb instead. And now I'm going to jump out. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, it was a mess. <laughs> oh my goodness. But that was that sequence of events. <laughs> what happened to me at the very starts, uh, I went to right zone and this... There was Charger and one other there, and someone went down, then I went down, then I went down to Charger, and that's pretty much how it went. <laughs> uh, to answer Savage Cavage's question, um, I love that name. The, co the, the coaching, I, I'm pretty sure I said that correctly. Uh, the coaching is happening after a couple more games of League here. Uh, we always, we usually go to power for league um, before we get started to give people time to kind of trickle in. But uh, we just had someone have to drop after game four. So we're just going to go three more games. And I then, want uh, you guys to look at their abilities and see what I have seen. Lots of special saves. <laughs> Last one really... far right Where's the Swift? In, their, okay. in the court. Uh, I don't actually... Baller incoming? Oh. <laughs> oh, chicken. cut off, push ledge. Got one. Left side, left side, Swift. Got me. Pushing Swift. Pro down, I, Swift there. got me. Swift still coming left glass. Oh, one, flanking left, one flanking left, under plat. They're coming I right now, they're coming right glass, right glass. I literally got shot through a wall. Bomb coming down. Keep on me. Nice. We're two down, be careful. Still two down, be careful. Bro. I'm gonna boot you. I should have double checked to see where you were. Oh, one on me, got him. Okay, I have armor. So pop it. Are we can mid, two in mid. Ah, uh, dang. Okay, Alright, we're two down. Play... Don't go in. Don't go in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna yeah, play yeah. something more aggressive on the next game. <laughs> I know I can be aggressive with the dynamo, but... It's 
not cutting it with the comp. Okay, got one. On right glass. Ugh. Got him. Oh no, I'm dead. Uh, I got sniped from ledge. Okay, going around the left side. Uh, there's one on our snipe. Jamie. I'm out of ink. Got the down. Good. Uh, Capro in snipe. Our side. Don't go to it. Let the it come plant. to you. It might actually have come to this jump. <laughs> Did that help with armor? Right, with things. <laughs> I just, I just whacked him on the jump. Oh, that's a bomb. Got one. Oh, no. There's a jump to their ledge, which I should get. <laughs> Got him. I'm down to bomb. 2v2. Two two. One down. ledge, one their ledge. I'm on zone. Swift on left glass. I'm on left carousel. On our ledge, on our ledge, watching my jump. Thank you. Got one. Oh, it's, I just realized it's triple pro. A double. They're wiped, they're wiped. Okay, let's get into lockout stuff. Dynamo collapse are fantastic. Okay, right. guy coming out left side. Took away the rail. Griff is on the flat. Follow the pro. Got the, the pro. Got another pro. Oh, that's a polar. Yeah, bomb coming out. I'm rushing their court. I traded with the slip. Uh, Cryo, can you put a beacon in the middle of zone? Got Thank one. You. Another one on me. No. Coming, coming. Trying to shred. Can't get it. Backing up. Uh, I should not have challenged that. Uh, this whiff. Let's hold. Can you, you can. if you can? Nice. There what? you go. <laughs> <laughs> I, had three, I had three face to face. That was scary. <laughs> That's good. They're shooting yeah. at you. They're not shooting at the zone. <laughs> They were feet. Debbie is that soldier from the meme holding out her hands. I am wearing protecting a us all. sweater. <laughs> <laughs> On my dynamo belt. <laughs> I have pilot What's up, T Powerful? And I'm just gonna keep this. I'm enjoying flanking as a dynamo, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I flanked them twice as a junior. Yeah, it's uh it works. <laughs> yeah, Lily is a, a staunch believer in that tactic. I like <laughs> the, the names. Ben, ben, three, two, sucks. One. ben sucks. <laughs> I made That's something comment. toxic would do. Yep. I made this comment before on a low ink, uh, especially on like Starfish main stage. Any weapon can flank when you know how to do it. Uh, Gem, I'm gonna follow you out. The uh, squiffs are gonna be watching. Yeah, I see. Rollers, are, rollers flanking already. Yeah, that's one of them down. I'm trying to give you paint. Thank you. What yeah, happened over armor. here? Uh, well, that flank. didn't work. There was someone behind me. Careful, we're two down. One coming right. That one. Nice pick. This will look at me. Yeah, there's another one up top. I could at least Roll trade that garden. Nice. Good trade. That was a sick 180. Swift <laughs> down. There you go. Another one on me. Got him. Okay, I'm gonna get over left zone. I got it. You're gonna hold on onto I'm left side. Paint their half bite, yeah. Oh, okay. Here. Got both squiffs. Okay, Another one on me. I'm down. Oh, in mid, in mid. 52 on their grass. Carbon's up on spire. Oh no. Thank but you. Carbon. Pushing their teeth. Got one. Top mid. Bone their jail. Top mid. Oh, they're weak. Top mid. Oh, nice. That's go. wipe. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to hit that. Uh, 
Uh, no. I missed. No. Oh, if I had the gun on the carbon, that would have been great. I love this beacon on the left, although it's kind of wide open on the one side. <laughs> I'm going to it though. Whee. Our zone, our zone, our oh, zone. Jesus, Jesus. That's an inkjet. Bonk. I missed. I got bonked. Oh, we're two down on the left. Okay. Carbon's on right. Popping There's bombers. Three on the right. One on our zone, two their T. One top mid. It's uh, carbon on top mid. Jumping to I'm, zone. I'm here with you. Two pushing me. Yep. One week. Oh, Carbon got behind me. I didn't see him. Got one. Popping armor. Uh, I. Oh my god. Thank you. I am impressed you got that. Good job. That that was not me. Someone else got it. Oh, you in the general you. sense. I feel like Debbie should have been dead after that. Got oh, one. Geez, oh, there's Squiff Week. They're down. Nice. <laughs> Uh, hey, uh, can grass? I get a beacon right here on left side? One their teeth. Got nice. both. Thank you. <laughs> that was such overkill. I know. I love it. <laughs> Alright, I'm down on right. There's a carbon Carbon down through. They're on right zone. Nice. Um, Just clean up the zone and we're good. I'm cleaning Armor. up now. How's that? There you go. Good job, <laughs> Debbie. Good job, Debbie. Debbie, Debbie. Dri drip pick. I can't drip pick when people are charging in front of me, so I need to charge my own flick. Drip flick. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yozai asks, any tips for late S plus nine, mostly readability and other players and how to work around teammates? Um, so in terms of just like reads to make on the opponents, that's something where th there, there are too many like individual situations. Like that, that's something that comes from experience and from your, your memory of uh, what you've seen people do before. It's like, the reads are like, this is a short range shooter who is pushing this position right now and here's how they usually play it. That's kind of what you're acting on in those situations. Um, generally play safe, play not to die because otherwise you are leaving it up to chance. Oh wait, this is, that was game three. We need to get to the VOD review here. Um, but, uh, <laughs> the how to get out of S plus video is designed with, you know, those kinds of ideas in mind. Um, and it's, you know, it's a 30 minute video. Um, so that kind of goes to show how much there is to say on that subject. I, I, it's hard to boil down to just a, a single piece of advice, but that video is what I would recommend you go and check out. All right. Um... Oh, here's here's one I can say. Don't play Neo Sploosh. <laughs> that that's my piece of advice. Okay, so now with that out of the way. It's going to be impactful. Um, I, I can give more more on that piece of advice if if people are actually interested there, but it's very rare that I see a, a Neo Sploosh who is successful on that weapon there. So today we are going to be talking about the. Uh, match that I've been given from Cryo, who's uh, Dunky Wunker, the uh, ball point that was playing with us just now. Uh, we've got a match that is uh, Zones Humpback. And I need to switch the screen over so that you can see what I'm talking about. And put it in Discord. That <laughs> okay, so there's that. And then we go here. Actually, we don't need to go there. We could go here. Okay. So Cryo should be able to watch the stream that I'm putting through Discord so you can see stuff in real time. And then everybody on stream should be seeing this uh, YouTube video here. Uh, now, if uh, maybe like Debbie and Jamie wouldn't, or I'm going to be talking to Debbie a little bit, but maybe if Jamie wouldn't mind uh, keeping an eye on the chat so that if questions are asked, um, those actually make it to my ear, because um, I will not have chat up for the time being. I have to full screen until I get a, a dual monitor set up, and I'm being a Luddite about that. 
<laughs> All right. So this is uh, S rank Splat Zones Humpback Pump Track. Taking a look at the comp, this is a pretty nice comp for you to have here. Lots of paint, especially from the Zap and the Sploosh. And uh, the tri slosh. this is one of their, their happy places because they hit up over ledges really well. And the entirety of mid is a very strange shape that uh, having a weapon that can hit over angles like that and doesn't have to shoot at a straight line is, is huge. So that's really nice. Other team, we're looking at uh, a, a jet and a bamboo, which are going to be a pain in the butt for your frontliners but they are not so much a pain for you because you've got more range than they do. So that's pretty nice. Um, then they're going to have a brush, so you'll want to be watching out for flanks. Um, that's kind of how the brush is going to want to play. And a junior that's going to probably spend its whole time holding down ZR and throwing rain on the zone. So uh, something that I would like to uh, point out right away um, as we get started here is a uh, a document that uh, Devi shares and uh, talks about with anybody who asks her questions about the uh, positioning on these maps. Um, we've shown maps like these before. I'm going to switch over here. This is a small version of it. Let me just get it downloaded really quickly and <laughs> blow it up. Okay, there we go. This is a little better. Um, so I'm going to switch the window over here, and it's not showing up. That's cool and groovy. Uh, maybe if I put it in a slideshow. Huh? Huh? What does the plus button do? The plus button? There's a plus button underneath the picture on the, from the Google There it is. Page. Um, <laughs> well, it's showing up in my window option, but it's not... Okay, uh, I have I have one more idea. So we'll go back to. Th um, that's not what I'm looking for. Okay, hold on. We want to go here. We want to go here. Sorry for the delay here. Why is it not letting me capture this window anymore? Would it help? Because, if I oh, is it because it's here? on another? Sorry for the technical difficulties, folks. Give me just a second and we'll have it figured out. Let's cut that. Let's go here. Come on. Here, here, here. Okay, so that's back on. It's here. It's just not oriented right. Hey, Debbie, Yashi was wondering if they could have the, uh, the maps. Uh, like... Yeah, I can put them in the Discord. All right, then... thank you. The idea that I have is to do it like this. Here, here, boom. Okay, there we go. All right. Ah, that was annoying. All right. So. This is a map that Devi creates for uh, the various map modes of places where backliners go. This is, um, this is where we have to watch stream delay. Um, it should still be coming through on, on Discord here. Nope. If... Oh, right, right, right. Okay, I know why. I can fix that. There. Okay. And uh, there it is. That's not where it is. Where am I even looking at this? OK, well, this is close enough. So red circles are places where you would want to take when you're on offense. So this is you already have a, um, a strong position. You've got some kind of advantage. You've got players on the other team down. Your team, you know is push again, they have more specials, they have more paint, something like that. Um, and uh, that's where you're going to be setting up so that uh, you can maintain control of the zone and force enemy players back. Purple is places where you're going to be playing on defense. 
Um, so this is your team has lost control of the zone and you're trying to regain control of the zone and force them away so that you can start playing offense instead. And then we've got these nice little blue areas. And these are... Uh, Devi is trying to do something that they won't expect. Um, and uh, th but that's why she's got them labeled non-traditional, whereas the other ones have been traditional. Um, these are higher risk, higher reward positions to take. They're places where you're a little bit more exposed, it's a little bit more dangerous, but on the plus side, the enemy team probably isn't going to be expecting you to be there and will have less of an idea how to deal with it. Um, there is a, a point in this match where I definitely would recommend you take one of these non-traditional positions. Um, so we'll be talking about that when we get there. But let's get the match started and see what happens off, off the jump. So when you roll out, you go straight to Bunker here, which is not a bad position at all. That was one of those places that Devi had down on the map as traditional offense and defense. So this is a pretty standard place for you to be going. And uh, you put a beacon down. Now, one thing I want to say about those beacons... Uh, that is a position where uh, the the stronger the players get, they will be looking for people there. They'll be, you know, expecting, I can't see it, therefore assume somebody's there. And they'll do things like paint over the top or throw bombs over the top to make sure that they've cleared someone out before they try to push anywhere near there. And if you put beacons that far up on the hill, they can actually sometimes be seen. Maybe sometimes the enemy team sees a jump going over the top from certain positions, um, and that can make it a little bit more vulnerable. Someone just lobs a, a suction bomb over the top or something like that, and that can go wrong for your teammate. So with beacons, you want to put them in safer locations where they're deeper behind cover, where it's a much harder angle to throw a bomb at or shoot at. Um, so putting them further up there uh, endangers your teammates a little bit more than they need to be endangered. Um, so that's something just in general across this whole match. I'm not going to talk about it too much more because that's about all there is to it. Uh, but make sure that your beacons are as deep in a corner as you can put them and as difficult a place to shoot and hit fall-off shots as you can possibly find. All right. And so okay, then we move over screen. here. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Switch the screen. <laughs> I was like, okay, we're going, we're talking about the map, but now it sounds like you're continuing yeah. video, so. Apologies. <laughs> there we go. Right. Um, so I'll, I'll back up because I realize now that we weren't showing where the beacon was. So the beacon's up there. That's not the worst, but that is also like, if I'm right here and I'm like a K-shot or something, I just have to throw a suction bomb on this back wall somewhere, and that takes out that beacon. A better place would be like down in the crook over here of this wall or as far back as you can get around this wall um because if someone's jumping here and they're already pushing into this area this jumper is messing up so a um, little bit safer of a place to put those two um, or you could just put it back in the corner or something like that somewhere where it's less likely to be seen by someone who's uh progressing on the bunker so we come over this way um this is a little bit less traditional of a position and uh, I would say the main reason to go over here is not to get control of zone because you don't, you can hit maybe like one third of zone from here. It's not terrible, but the, the better reason to come up here is to aggress this, um, which you do actually successfully here. Um, one of the things to keep in mind is, you know, you outrange these weapons. Um, so anywhere where you can get height or... Uh, yeah, height advantage is one thing, but range advantage over them, you know, fight them over open space where you can just kind of kite them back is going to be nice. Here, uh, one, you know, criticism you can make of this location is that the jet is a actually able to reach you from here. So you're not really able to use your range against them, but you also have a faster kill time than they do. And so this isn't necessarily a terrible fight to take anyway. And you do eventually end up winning it. Uh, you come very close to losing it. I think a stronger Jet Squelcher player, you know, someone with stronger aim, might be able to get that pick before you get your aim on here. But uh, it does end up working out. Now, two things that I want you to do right away as soon as you get this pick. One of them is heal. Uh, I want you, like, dropping into your ink right away 
so that you can, you know, you're only like one shot away from going down. You know that there's someone else over here. So you need to be worried about them for now. But what I also want you to be doing once you've done that is starting to push up. Um, because, you know, the goal of taking this position is to neutralize this as a threat. If you can get this bamboo player off of their window, your frontliners can paint the zone basically for free. It's just them and the enemy frontliners. Um, also, you can't paint zone as well from here as you can from the enemy window. Um, so, this position, and I'm not sure if you can see my mouse anymore, but uh, this position that... Uh, you're looking at right now where the bamboo is, where that blue circle is, it's actually a really powerful position for a splatling to take. Um, Devi really likes getting up onto that position whenever she can, because let's, let's think about, you know, what is generally going to happen. Uh, if they drop out from spawn, you see them, and you have a whole ton of empty space with no cover in between you and them. They have to push through your zone of control to get to you in the first place. Um, the most they're going to be able to do is bomb you out. And uh, you have some recourses to that. Uh, if they, you know, throw bombs and they're really starting to put pressure on you, maybe pop a special or something, all you have to do is drop down into their trench down here. Um, are you able to see my mouse? I don't no. think you can see my mouse. Yeah. Um, man, we need to find another way of showing this. Um, let me open up Sendu and just draw things on their, their plans map. That's probably a better way to highlight this once I've checked in. Uh, so we're going to go humpback, and this is zones, and we want the top down. There we go. And so now cut that off, go down to here, and here. There we go. All righty. Uh, and let's scoot this over a little bit. Move the toolbar. There. So you're right here. There's a bamboo right here. And what would be really powerful for you to do is to go right here and pitch a tent on this spot. From here, you have way more control over the zone. You can hit like this arc or something like that. Whereas from here, you can only hit about this much. So from here, you're hitting about 33% of the zone, you know, one third of it. From here, you can hit most of the zone. Um, so that's a really nice place to be able to, you know, play for objective if they're they're painting it, if they're not contesting you. Now, if they do contest you, they're going to come from here or they're going to come from here. Or maybe like this way, but it's basically the same as looking to your left. And none of those positions give them very much cover at all before they have to, like, drop down and rush at you. Um... I guess, like, the jet could get up here and have range on you. Um, and, like, maybe the bamboo, if they can, like, sneak in from this. I don't know. I don't really think... Uh, I think the bamboo can probably hit you from there. So that's something to worry about, to, like, pre-fire up here and paint up there. But you can kind of walk back and forth along this line if you have to. If you really get rushed, you can drop down into their trench here. But this position gives you a lot of control. It's a very strong offensive position. And uh, it's really hard for them to actually push you out of that. It takes a coordinated team effort to get you away. Um, so this would be a strong position for you to take. And that would force them all to funnel in through this way. Because uh, if they can't get you out of here, this is the only option they have to get to the zone quickly. And so all your frontliners will have to do is focus all of their energy on protecting this line right here and they can keep the enemy team off the zone effectively that way. So that's something that you do have the option to be taking right here. Um, and I'll switch back over to the other view now. Oops. There we go. And what we end up doing instead is we, uh, I think we end up actually dropping down you address that a little bit, you start to walk forward, and like I'm liking the idea, I'm liking the, the ink storm and everything, because right, the zone is still capped their color, but if you're displacing two or three enemy players, 
your teammates should probably be able to clean that up. Like, I don't even hate the idea of not throwing the rain on the zone this particular time, because you're, you're flushing them off of this position. But if you're going to throw rain, follow up on the rain. None of your teammates are going to do anything to help you with this rain. They're not going to throw bombs up there. They're not going to add shots. They're not going to, like, force the enemy team into the rain. They're too far away from that. The only person who's getting anything out of that rain is you if you decide to stay on the, the window here. That's what this is called. And instead, you just throw the rain and then run away. Um, rain is trivial to deal with if there's no other pressure being exerted. It's very similar to missiles. Um, you know, the average, you know, B rank player can just like paint their feet and get out of an ink storm if that's the only thing that they have to deal with. But if you're throwing things at them, if you're putting pressure on them, if there are bombs in front of them, if you're moving in and using the rain to push them back out of the positions they want to fight you from, that's when you're going to get a lot of value out of it, even, you know, at a higher level. And so... Whenever a special goes down, whether yours or your teammates, you always want to be taking advantage of that in some way. Um, unless, you know, you're in a 2v4 and your, your teammate drops a special for some reason, even though they're getting rushed down and about to die. Basically, every other time than that, you see a special go out, you want to try and, you know, move towards that side of the map. Try and use that side of the map. Try and, you know, get some shots on someone who's already damaged because of the rain. Try and, you know paint their feet so they can't get out of the rain. You don't have bombs to throw, but if you did, you know, that would be kind of the idea. Um, instead, you know, you have all this pressure on this right-hand side, and you give it up completely by dropping down here. Now, you're in a worse position than the bamboo is if they go and take a window again. They can have height advantage over you, they have more cover than you do, and you have to aim up at an awkward angle, whereas uh, they can kind of, like, right side peak the ledge they can get like not super close to the ledge and not expose a lot of themselves but still have shots on you so down here is basically a position you probably only want to be in if you get forced out of the position that you were at on right and you're trying to jump out you don't have any height advantage over anybody your range doesn't matter because if you just aim up and try and shoot someone on zone, you're going to hit this ledge. You're completely exposed to anybody on the enemy window where that bamboo was earlier. So you're not getting a lot out of being here, and you kind of just want to be getting out from once you're in that position. Uh, and I would say you don't want to be in that position at all. I would say, you know, being in here would have been the stronger play. Um... Because now you're forced to just completely retreat and undo all of the progress forward that you've been able to accomplish by taking out the jet and putting the rain over on the right-hand side. Um, one other thing I want to talk about is uh, the, the kind of uh, pattern that you slip into generally when you are um, in neutral and don't have enough information to make a play yet. Um, you're, you're kind of holding pattern. Generally, what you, you tend to do is you go specifically to this one spot, and we'll talk about that in a second. You go specifically to that one spot and you spray a little bit of paint in like a specific area. Um, so it looks like you, you, you do get some shots on a, a player there, but, so, let's see, they're popping rain, they're popping bubbles. Yeah, there's probably not a lot you're going to be able to do to undo the bubbles or, like, avoid the cap. But if you're trying to paint the zone, then shooting all in one direction isn't what you want to be doing. You want to be sweeping kind of from right to left um, in the sort of painting pattern that I've shown before on stream. So a little bit up and down as you go this way, kind of like my mouse is going. Um, that way you'll cover more area instead of trying to like really thoroughly paint this one line. If you're aiming for an opponent, this is a really low percentage place to try and get picks from because they're just going to duck behind the wall here and be difficult to see. So I would focus on painting until someone is like maybe stepping forward into mid or your teammate is engaging them. 
uh, and you're actually able to catch something. Because otherwise, you're just going to tickle them a little bit. They're going to back up, and you could have spent the time maintaining the zone instead. Um, as a splatling, your charge is, is precious. You have a lot less time that you're able to be firing than other weapons. And so one of the major important optimizations for a splatling player is figuring out when do I need to fire and where do I need to fire? Um, because firing and not getting anything out of it is a lot worse than if you're like an end zap and you just have practically infinite bullets and you can zoom and zip around anywhere. Um, you want to always be putting yourself in a position where you're going to have maximum impact and a position where your shots are, you know, going to do something when you have them. So right now, this isn't a bad place to be. You can, you know, help with this fight, and now you're seeing the brush come over to the left-hand side, so you can be dealing with that. Um, so, like, this positioning here, where you're helping your teammates, you're providing cover fire, you're painting for them, this is kind of where you want to be in general. Um, like, it... You do back up and surrender a lot of pressure that you could have had on the enemy plat. But once you're here, you're starting to, you know, do some good things. You're helping paint against this bamboo. You're, you know, pressuring them and making it so that your teammates can get the pick easier. Um, once they go behind this wall, I would start shifting my focus away from them because your shots aren't going to hit them anymore. So, like, they back up here. Even, you know, before they go down... I would be switching my attention to something else, especially this player right here, who poses a more immediate threat to you and your teammate. Um, you know, this guy has got two people shooting at him and is backing up behind a wall so you can't hit them, but this player is way out in the open, and if you leave them there, they're going to cause trouble for you. Um, so what I would be doing here, instead of backing up, because backing up cuts your line of sight on them, is I'd be walking forward more. I'd be standing as far on the edge as I can and trying to shoot over the right-hand side of this ledge. Um, well, kind of like right side peeking over it at this uh, brush as they come in. And if they do get down underneath you, if you, you miss enough shots that they can get around to here, now you need to start backing up because if they just walk around this side here, they've got your back and uh, you can't like allow that to happen. So it looks like, yeah, they, they try to hit over the top at you, and you're lucky your teammate does clean this up, but I don't favor you in this fight where you're having to, first of all, left side peek around this wall. Um, so you're going to have to expose yourself fully before your gun actually makes it around the corner here. And also, you're standing in their range now. Um, the, the advantage, remember, that you have as a backline weapon is that you have range. If they're in range of you, you don't have that advantage anymore. And so typically, you should expect that like most frontline weapons are going to beat you when they get there. Um, so this is a very risky play to step out in front of them, except for the fact that your teammate is hammering their face. So it works out for you. Another thing you can do is actually move more to the right because you do have that wall cover and then you're right side peeking the brush again from below and you have a little extra range distance. You just have to make sure that they haven't like continued to swim into the right trench there uh, just to like flick up at you. Right. Um, so here we go. And you should be seeing this on screen. So... Where you take the fight is from here. And from here, the brush can hit over the top at you. Or they can flank around here and be in a range to hit you right away. And what I'm recommending instead is to fight from here. Where you can hit shots at this angle. Uh, because you're, you, you know, you hold your weapon, weapon on the right-hand side. This is right side peak advantage. So you can, like hold the weapon out over the ledge while you're still partly protected from it and you're further back away from it, then if the brush does make it this far, you're able to back up and be out of their range still while you walk backwards in and fire at them. Um, so that's my take on it. Is that basically what you were saying, Devi, or is there a different position I, you were thinking? This is when the brush is underneath. 
is actually back up and use that wall on the like behind on the right. Like you see how that second wall's on your right there? Right here. Now go back further to the to the end of that wall. Not in front of it, but behind oh, it. Oh, right here. Right there. Okay. That way you can still see the front of the bunk if the brush does happen to swim down into the trench. You just have to um, make sure you keep an eye on that. That like give a little bit of like paint beforehand just to make sure they haven't come all the way down into trench or see where the paint is. That way you still have like that extra range, that line of fire uh, if it's in front of you. And then if the brush does happen to come back around the other way, well, look at that. You still have space against it. Mm -hmm. Now this is a risky position if, for example, they have something like an E-leader positioned right here because they would have line of sight and be able to pick you from that angle. But they don't. They've got a jet and a bamboo. So this position is like super duper safe. It doesn't give you a lot of control over something that's important, uh, like the zone or places where they can paint the zone. So this is a very defensive posture to take. But with a brush getting that close to you, this is a place where you could definitely uh, back up to until you've neutralized that threat and you can move back in. So, brush gets taken out. So this might be a position, actually, since you have, you know, your teammates looking forward, this might be a position where you can move up and get onto the zone. Um, one of the places that uh, Devi talks about to take is this position here. Um, there's no brush who's going to be sharking in here. It's just the Jet and the Junior. Junior is probably not going to shark here, and Jet is going to want a better vantage point when they're behind. So they might be here or here in all likelihood. So if you're able to take this position, that really puts a lot of pressure on this angle here. And uh, you can sometimes, you know, if this gets cleared out by your frontliners, you can maybe walk forward and get line of sight on people who are trying to come in from this direction. Um, so there, there's a lot of power that that can give you. And since you have this big numbers advantage right now where you've taken out the brush, and the bamboo, and they don't really have strong front line for pushing in, um, that might be an opportunity for you to uh, take a slightly more aggressive posture and like lead your team up with you. Um, you can actually see where the jet is shooting from. So you had, uh, it tells you where this last range person is. So you are able to go up into zone and contest it with your range to keep it off so then your teammates can follow you up. Mm -hmm. So I also, you know, don't hate the idea of trying to get back up into this position, but we never actually go for standing up here ourselves. Um, I think, you know, if you right side peek here, this player is already under some pressure. It, you might be able to get a pick before anyone's even in range of you, depending on how that plays out. Um, but uh, we rain this area right here. Now... I'm less of a fan of this rain in this situation because they're all up right now. And my guess is that in the next th few seconds or so, they're going to start pushing towards the zone. So if they all like drop, maybe two or three of them drop here, this rain doesn't really do anything for you because you haven't shifted them away from someplace they want to be. If you anticipate that they're going to be pushing the zone soon, what you want to be doing is putting it down here or maybe just on the zone in general. I would say a little bit ahead of the zone so that they're forced to stay even further away from the zone because um, you can paint through rain. If you're not in the rain, you can still paint the zone and cover up what the rain does. But if the rain is right here on the space that you need to stand in order to paint the zone, now what happens is they're zoned away um so to illustrate this a little bit if you put rain over this way so it's maybe controlling like this space right here enemy team can just take these positions and push the zone normally um you're not really stopping them from getting in there but if instead we were to put rain through here now there's like this whole area where they want to be to be able to paint the zone, right? Um, 
they they could you know try and paint the zone from here i guess if they have a lot of range basically just the jet can do that the jet's probably going to be painting from here pretty safely anyway but the frontliners really don't have a good way to get into the zone unless they go like way all the way around and even here this is a terrible place for a frontliner to be a lot of the time because they just don't have height advantage they can't see a lot they have a lot of cover and they can maybe sneak up on someone who goes all the way out here um but most of the time they they just want to get away back to here if they end up in this spot um so you're cutting off an awful lot for a pretty long time if you put it over in this direction um and to illustrate the last point i was making if you do just put it over the zone it's going to paint the zone which can be really helpful especially if there is a contest over who can get the most paint on the zone right now but it's not stopping a junior from just standing right here and painting through it um or you know a brush from being right here sharking waiting to push in as soon as the rain is past them um so it's going to displace them a lot less but it will paint the zone more so th that's kind of my thinking on how the rains should be thrown here From here, again, you know, I don't hate the idea to pressure this area, but what I want to see you doing is pressing in on right so that you can take advantage of what the rain has done for you and get a position where you can paint the zone from. Because right here, you're really not going to be painting the zone very much, and it's a 4v4. So until either side has an advantage, um, the neutral kind of idea should be to paint the zone and try and keep it neutralized and don't let them get you know, apply a penalty to you. Um, and also, since they're going to be focusing on the zone so much, you charge special a lot faster that way. So they're catching on to the fact that you've been on right all the time, and now they're actually starting to throw bombs at you. Uh, in this position, I want to keep my height advantage. I, if I drop down, you know, this is a short-range weapon, they might decide to just push me. Um... So I would want to jump up onto here to avoid this auto bomb rather than dropping through. Also, dropping through um, doesn't give you like cover from the auto bomb unless you're able to like move away from it fast enough, right? It'll explode, and you can see there's a little bit of an explosion radius underneath the grate. Um, whereas if you just get up over a ledge, it'll hit the ledge and not go over the top of it. So you see how it, it, there's this like circle underneath the grate that it's hitting? You do still take damage even though you drop through it like that. And so it's a little bit riskier to drop through. You're now in a position where if this junior had decided to rush you, it, it would be up to your teammate to save you. Um, there are definitely um, some advantages to being up above rather than being below. Also, you know, if you do decide to like push forward and, and take the fight against the junior, you're at an advantage against the junior, but now the, the bamboo over here has your back. And now you're forced to kind of left side peek around at the bamboo and you're aiming up and they have cover. There's just a lot that uh, they have to use over you now that you're down here. Um, if they were to throw a fizzy closer to you and start to engage, you might be in some trouble. It's good that you run away from that. Um, I would still be keeping tabs on that to see if they decided to push you further. You now have a teammate in between you and them. So, you know, maybe they're focused on your teammate instead but i wouldn't just like turn my back on that just in case they decide to get over aggressive because remember you do have range over them and so if they're trying to shoot at you and they can't reach you that might be a position where you who now have height advantage and have now had a chance to get charged and figure out where they are could potentially get a pick on them this position I think the only reason I would want to be here as a splatling is either I was on window and had to drop and now I'm jumping out or I'm putting this beacon here and then I'm going to run back to another position. Um, you are left side peeking on this side if someone rushes you over the left. If somebody comes at you from over the top from anywhere, your range advantage doesn't mean anything because there's a ledge in front of you. Uh, you can't aim up and get like fall off shots on them or anything from there. Um, you're very vulnerable to anyone pushing you from in front. Um, maybe, I guess, if you get up behind this block, that might be a good idea. But it's risky to be there because, you know, somebody's already here. If somebody pushes through zone, you know, they can flank this angle pretty easily. Um, I would say that this is not a strong position for a backliner to be in in most cases. 
Um, like maybe if you're trying to aggress the bunker, you try and peek out from here, as long as you know that there's nobody who's going to be able to push in through here on the left. But this brush should 100% just splat you right here, right now. And I don't know what happens. They, like, aim down at the ground. Maybe they run out of ink. But, like... They ran out of ink. You could see it from the flicks. <laughs> okay. It was like... Whoa. Even if they run out of ink, a brush should be able to get out of this situation. Because what they do is they wait until they have enough ink to do one flick on the ground. They s sit in that and swim in it so that they recharge ink. And then they put the brush on the ground and they walk through the enemy ink away from you. Um, so they're still making a pretty big movement mistake by being where they are. Um, but they also should just shouldn't have missed you. Um, so you're, you're lucky that you get this. You shouldn't expect them to let you get away with this in uh, future ranks. Okay. What about that box is that it is uh, protection for like, uh, what is it? Uh, like say there's a Hydra or an E-Leader or something. I know this is a box that, um, like that's a box that a lot of like the, the lower range back lines uh, will take just to get a little bit of advantage. Like I know a lot of dynamos like to take that box like, enemy dynamos like to take that box to aggress your side window. Um, uh, I've used it myself uh, for cover to... Oh, you mean to, to go here it, to aggress the window? Yeah, to use that. But oh, even okay. you can even use it in defense if you're aiming for their bunk. So where is right now... Like, where um, Cryo is right now on the screen, um, that's something I would do if I'm going to aggress their bunker. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a little bit of extra cover. <laughs> but the issue that I see with it right away is that you've got this whole area painted the wrong oh, color. Oh, yeah, no. That's, that's the only issue with it right now, is mm -hmm. that it's not your color. Um, but when it is your color, then that's what it's used for. Right. <laughs> I, I definitely agree 100% there. Could even put a beak in there. You could... <laughs> yeah, that, that's not a bad place to do it. Um, this is a position where... It, this is great for frontliners because it's very hidden from anyone who's on the zone and you can kind of pop up and surprise people. But the, basically all this is doing right now is cutting your range. Um, it's making it so that you have the ability to shoot at fewer things on the map. Um, the more powerful positions for you are going to be higher up because you can look down over the top of cover. Um, and right now... If, you know, a brush or a junior were to get on top of you here, you have no advantages over them. So staying there is probably not the play. Um, you probably want to be moving up to take a position behind cover, maybe here or here, where you're higher up. You have a vantage point over more places. Um, another thing that I want you to be doing more often that we haven't seen a lot so far is looking for where your teammates are. Um and trying to get yourself into a position where if they get pushed, you can provide cover fire for them. Um, it's really, really helpful when, you know, they get in it over their heads a little bit to have even just a little bit of extra paint over the top of them that you're putting down, uh, but especially fire support from a long ways away. Because um, if someone's shooting at them, but then you start shooting from a range that they can't deal with, they have to get away from your teammates. They have to back up. They have to take the fight worse. Um, and that's something that can really help your frontliners. And right now, you know, you're putting yourself in a position where you can't even see your frontliners, let alone be in a position where you have the range to help them. Um, a quick map check can be helpful, but also just get yourself out from behind walls. Like, don't put yourself in places where you can't see. Um, you tilt your camera around a little more. Um, get more information from what you can see on the map. Because uh, right now, okay, you've got a back frontliner who's like back there. Are they back there because we're losing left and they can't push left? I don't know, you know, what's developing on the left-hand side from the enemy team. And oh, look, there's actually someone on left zone right now. Um, this puts you in a scramble situation. You need to, you know, get a, a charge in case they're about to rush you. But also, this is a place where you cannot hit very much. Like... You, the angle that you can hit is, like, maybe up to here. And then anyone who's further back than this line that I'm drawing with my mouse, 
you can't hit because you'll hit the floor in front of you instead of getting up over the top and, and hitting them. Um, so if anything, you know, if you're going to take the fight, <coughs> you want to be walking forward to give yourself a better angle. And if you're not going to take the fight, then you need to swim way further back and just get away from this. So you do walk forward to take the fight, but at this point, you're doing it slowly enough that the brush can just completely get in position, and this should go their way. Ends up going their way because of the ink storm. An x rank brush does not miss those shots. Um, you'll, <laughs> you'll get to a point where the, you can't expect them to miss that many times uh, and let you get away that far. Were you going to say something, Debbie? Yes, the ink storm. If you back up about like five seconds, you'll see there was an ink storm thrown on their plat. Uh, I would have loved to see the ink storms neutralize each other out because that actually could have put extra pressure on that brush because right now it's using that ink storm for cover. You could have done the same thing for your two teammates pushing the left right now. Mm -hmm. But you just kind of panicked there and kind of threw it over the, over the window because like you knew there was a long range there. But the biggest threat right now is the zone. Mm -hmm. And also, throwing it over window, again, with no extra pressure, with without teammates throwing bombs at it or anything like that, very unlikely to even move them that much. Like, a bamboo who's sitting up there, they're going to see the storm come in, they're going to fire one last shot as it starts to get over them, they'll back up for about two seconds, and then they'll walk forward again. And you've only really moved them by, for, like, two or three seconds of the match, and they're able to make it back in. Um, if you throw it on the zone, you're painting the zone, which helps your teammates paint zone. You're doing damage to any of them that end up on the zone, and if they get splatted on zone, they paint the zone even more. And it's giving your teammates the ability to move through what would be enemy paint because you've got a whole bunch of paint out there. Um, so it, this is a much more relevant place to be throwing it. Um, and it also, you know, might have splatted the, br the brush just a little bit faster. Uh, I think this is a very minor thing that might not have saved you anyway from how much you got hit, but if you just fire, like, one pellet of ink at this splotch right here, you ha it's all green all the rest of the way out of this uh, storm. So if you just fire that one shot, I think you can actually move through this fast enough that you don't end up in the storm and you can make it away. What was that? Or actually jump over it. Because yeah, I know that there's too. times where, where I'll see it where, like, I know I'm not quick enough to put a spot of ink down to get by. I just jump over it. Mm -hmm. um, but swimming yep. through it, not only will it slow you down, it'll also damage you more. Make the ink storm uh, have an easier time getting you down. All right, so your team is able to uh, get the remaining picks. Um, now, uh, you know, this is great. But I would say that they, they basically did this independently of your impact on the fight. Um, because the fight is mostly happening on the left-hand side of the map right now. Um, and so you're worried about, you know, keeping them off the window. You throw that there. I'm not even sure the bamboo was committed to being there. They might have just not even intended to go that way in the first place. Um, but since you see now that the fight is on left, you could, you know, start charging up and walk behind the, this this wall here if you wanted to provide some fire support for Fuma Mota here. Uh, or, you know, th the move that you make onto the zone, it's very, very aggressive, and I probably would feel a little uncomfortable making it, but if you do it early enough, you do probably catch the brush at least coming around the side. Um, but because we hesitate down here for this long, the brush just gets on top of us and we don't have a positional advantage over them at all. And so you do a little bit of damage to the brush, your teammates are able to finish the brush off, but then your tri slosh does a whole bunch of work, gets two picks, and is able to collapse on the final player with your other teammate. And that's really why the uh, zone gets uh, capped here. Um, so right now, yes, there's a whole bunch of ink right here, but you know that the enemy team just wiped. The, the brush is down, the bamboo went down, like everybody on the other team went down. And there's a whole bunch of green on the other side of it too. So the chances are very, very low that there's anybody sharking in here. You've got a teammate over here on the right-hand side too. So if somebody came through on the right, they would have had to go right by this guy, Hot Cheetos. So I don't think you have to be scared of that like you are right now. Um, you can kind of just paint that up, make sure you've got it 
locked down and also get forward and get some vision so that if somebody does start to push in there you see them earlier than this um you saw i think it was the brush right as you're dropping here yeah they're on zone right now if you paint this up maybe that prevents them from going further or maybe that cuts off their escape route you know that might have helped a little bit but also now that you see someone's there this is a position where you want to make sure that you know if you can have an impact you can maybe this guy is keeping this brush in place on the zone for long enough that you're going to be able to actually get shots on them your teammate just went down maybe if you get up over the top of this you can see what got your teammate and make a better decision a more informed decision now but I don't know what your teammate went down to. Maybe for this point, I, I'm probably assuming it's the jet. Um, we're not collecting enough information from you know where we're positioning. We're putting ourselves behind walls so that we can't see what's going on on the map. In that it's, case, like with the mm -hmm. just with the brush on zone there in that moment, he put the beacon down, went over to the right instead of actually maintaining that bunker position and getting the cover over zone because from what it sees it's like you see the brush is attacking your teammate on the left here use that as, as i like to say use your front liners as bait mm -hmm. <laughs> and just fish out the person who's trying to splat your teammate and that is uh where you follow up so you just kind of target lock on that while your teammate is backing up from this person just be by being on bunker right now, you have a clear line of fire on this brush that was trying to get your teammate. But in this case, you took the time to go over to the right and then you kind of hesitated where to go. And then you see, oh my gosh, there's something happening over to the left again. I'm going to come back to the left. So it just takes away a solid five seconds of the time where you could have had an impact on the zone or giving cover to your teammate. Mm -hmm. I, if, you, you know, if there's an E-leader on the other team, then I totally understand being skittish about standing up here, you know, because mm -hmm. instant death, you know, can come from any place. But I feel like you're you're over focusing this position and trying to get people off of this position, because uh, if somebody's over here, they can't shoot you. So while yes, you're not like getting rid of them from standing here right now, um, unless you go over to the right hand side you can have an impact in a place that matters more, which is the zone. Um, the, the root of all teamwork is shoot at the guy who's shooting at your teammate. That, I have yet to see an example of teamwork that does not kind of boil down to that concept, basically. Um, so you've got a guy uh, on the other team who's not focused on you, so shoot him in the back. <laughs> and uh, that'll give you numbers advantage. That'll, you know, make them think twice about trying to push into mid and slow them down and let your frontliners push further forward because, oh no, there's a big scary ball point up there. Um, and it will generally just do a lot more for your team than being in this position where you can't pay much of the zone. You can see that there's a hammer over here, but not very well, and it's only because the hammer is raised up. And you also can't shoot over there because there's a wall on your way. Um, this is a very confined position. This is a very defensive position. You can't do much from here to help your team. Um, so try to position to have a greater impact than this. Uh, this is, uh, <laughs> this fight that you win here is something that I, I like to call a Jimmy Neutron moment. Um, there's an episode of Jimmy Neutron that I, I have, has always stuck with me where, um, Jimmy accidentally uh, shrink rays the entire town and they're about to get eaten by some aliens, uh, but he manages to heroically save the day and the town is all happy and proud of him and they come and give him a trophy. And then Cindy points out, why are we giving him a trophy? He's the one who caused this problem in the first place. And they're like, oh yeah, I guess he is, huh? This is an insane 1v1 that you win here. I am so shocked that you got out of this alive. Like the shots were perfect. The reaction was so tight right here to get the shots on in time. That is so insanely mechanically well played. You should not have had to play it that insanely mechanically well to get out alive. Um, you, you should have already known, you know, there's a hammer over on that side of the map. 
if they're going to come around to me, I need to put space in between them and me. And like you as a splatling, you can actually just do the lazy thing where you keep a concentrated line of fire on the hammer as it comes towards you. And as the hammer goes up, a shot will hit them. And then the hammer goes back down. And then the hammer goes up and another shot hits them. And you can actually get them down because you have enough range that they take too long to get to you before they, they get splatted. That is an option that you have, and you can just back up once they've gotten around the corner here and do that. But because you recognize this so slowly and turn to it to so slowly, you're forced to do something absolutely bonkers to save your skin. Um, and the fact that you, you know, get away with it, I think, uh, should not be the takeaway. The takeaway from this should be, I should have known that this guy was coming a lot sooner than I did, and either, you know, taking them out before they got the hammer out, which is what we were talking about earlier, or at this point, now that they've, you know, gotten here, back way, way up and get a charge ready so that you can laser at this player and they can't just keep hammering at you. Another thing that uh, they're probably looking for here is this beacon. Uh, this beacon is a target. This is something that even if they don't know someone's here, they're probably going to want to come over here and and smash the beacon anyway. So standing next to a beacon makes it more likely that even if they don't know where you are, they're going to spot you and try and take you out. So we've gotten some mechanical outplays on the brush so far, but... Uh, you know, th there were a couple of fights there I was talking about, like, they probably should have splatted you, and that's another one of them. This paint down here, I mean, it, great that we're getting special, but what is one of their, you know, what is the opponent opposing team going to do if they control this area right down here? They can't paint the zone. They can maybe threaten the position you're standing in right now, but you're not painting the zone. You're not attacking their teammates. So the only thing that I, I guess they could want to do is maybe push around bunker this way and try to flank you. But the brush already just did that from mid. Um, they've got a faster way to get there. So this is something they would probably only do if you've stopped them from trying to do that flank once before the faster way. I don't think this is super important. I think instead of painting this area first, you get right back up onto bunker and start painting the zone right away so that uh you can get this cap back with two of them down you stand a pretty good chance of actually getting the lead back in this situation um so you want to start making it more difficult for them to get back to the zone and once you've got the zone capped you can probably swim up on onto it and take a more aggressive stance it looks like the plan right now is going to be to come over the right hand side like, this player dropped here. You could probably have put some pressure on that from Bunker and, like, made them think twice about going into mid. Uh, if you walk out over to the edge here, you might actually be able to get shots on them or, you know, get shots on the bamboo or something like that. But you're not really doing a lot very quickly to engage the enemy team. Um, so you're kind of relying on your teammates to win fights instead of, like, helping them have an easier time winning those fights. You do back the bamboo up, and that's worth something for sure. Or I think that's the jet, actually. You do back them up, and uh, it looks like they might have been backing up to use the missiles anyway, but, you know, they're not able to attack your teammates on the zone, but your teammates aren't really on the right side of the zone. They're on the left side of the zone. Um, and seeing that, you know, that might be a cue to me, oh, I'm not getting a lot done on the right-hand side because there's a lot going on on left. Maybe I should, you know, jump back to base or jump back to a teammate who's on plat and get over to window instead. Um, get over to this position, which is what you've been trying to get the bamboo out of all this time. Um, you know, maybe the answer to them having a lot of ranged pressure from here and being able to attack your frontliners is taking that exact same power position and using your even longer range to attack their frontliners. Because a lot of the fighting has been going on on this side of the map where your team teammates have been pushing most of the time so if you're over here, that can help amplify that and increase the pressure that, like, your tri slosher is able to put down. Ooh, that's spooky. Uh, that's... So this feels to me like a, an example of a special that was thrown because you had special. 
Um, you got your meter filled, it charged up, it went all glowy, and that's just like a psychological trigger that makes you hit the right stick and throw it somewhere. And you threw it generally in the direction of the zone. It's probably not going to paint that much of the zone because of the angle you threw it at. And you don't know that there's anybody over there. Um, use specials as soon as they will be impactful, not as soon as you have them. So if this were going to help, you know, keep the zone capped for a little bit longer, that would be a decent reason to throw it. If it's going to help the, your teammate in this fight over here, that'd be a decent reason to throw it. But I don't know how much that rain is actually going to do for you from there. Um, it holds the right-hand side a little bit, but it probably only painted about one quarter of the zone. Um, maybe it puts them in a position where they have to push the zone from the left-hand side, but I don't know that you have any teammates on the left-hand side. I think they've all shifted right at this point. So... It didn't really do an awful lot for you the way that it was thrown there. Take a second and think, like, where can I throw this that it will actually be helpful? Um, where is a fight happening? You know, how can I get this to paint more of the zone and then throw it at that point? All right. Uh, from here, this isn't actually a terrible position to be in. Um, I was thinking that you wouldn't be able to paint much of the zone from here, but having tried it myself, like you actually can paint about half of the zone from this position. And it's also very safe because if someone does try to push over you, they have zero cover. You can, you can hit them as soon as they basically get to the outline of the zone here, if they're trying to push past the zone. So this is not a bad spot and you do get some good shots on, I think it's the rush as they go over the side there and they're trying to hit you. So that's not bad at all. Um, you don't the the rough part about this position though is that you can't really get, go much further the further forward you go the more you cut your own range um the more you have to like aim upwards and so the the sooner you're going to miss them because you're aiming over the top of their heads um like like we said before getting up into cubby over here it's putting a wall in your face it's making it so that you don't have a good angle and so you might want instead to, you know, once, you know, this area is cleared out, you know, nobody's coming at you, just get back up on top of bunker. And once zone is cleared out, you jump off bunker and take zone instead. You get a couple of shots on the brush again. Um, watching the aim. He was a little bit unsteady, and it's some of the times you're shooting your, your teammates' backs, which is unfortunate. Um, one of the reasons to always take an off angle from your teammates, it's not just that, you know, if they shoot in this direction, they hit your teammate and then they hit you, or they call at you if they're a charger or something. Um, one of the other advantages of taking an off angle is that you don't give your teammate a back massage instead of uh, shooting the opponent. Um, and another one is that they have to look in two different directions to be able to fight both of you. So your teammates do some pretty good cleanup here. I think most of what you're providing here for these fights is paint support. You're not doing a lot of like hitting shots or forcing the enemy team to move around or move to a, an uncomfortable position. Uh, it's mostly just that you're painting for your team there. So from, from Bunker, I think you would have been able to do a little bit more. I think you would have been able to hit some more shots apply more of a zoning pressure you you have more of a cone out in front of you that they can't be in this is a little bit risky i think dropping down because you have a teammate that went down another teammate is way over on the far left so you have at most one person who can help you here and they are solo missiled so now there's rain going out there's missiles on your teammate the other teammate is over on the far left and you're walking up to the zone, which is now getting contested, which means that they have some significant amount of paint going down on it, which means there's probably someone nearby. Um, they're, they're, the odds are starting to stack against you as you walk forward here. You put some fire out over there, but again, you're at an angle where you can't see a lot. The uh, left side of the zone, you have no idea if the brush is like beelining straight to, to you from the left-hand side. They will be in range before you can even see them. Like the, if a brush were to, to stop at max range from the zone and start swinging at you, the first thing you would see would not be the brush. It would be their ink um, because you've your peripheral vision is cut so much by being in this position. Um, 
You're also not super likely to get a pick from here because you can't see them because there's this wall in between you and them. Uh, I guess maybe if you were to get up on top of this block, you would have a better vantage point, but that makes you even more vulnerable to someone on the left. Um, th this isn't a very strong position for you for a number of reasons. So um, I'm a little bit worried for your safety being there. So you do start to get some information from the left-hand side, and so you are able to, you know, spot out that the brush is there. You're starting to play more around cover. So I like that we're collecting information, but now let's say this brush pushes you. You're once again at an angle where if you try to shoot up at them, you're probably going to hit the floor, uh, gonna, like going to have to hit over their heads or something like that. Um, th again, they're in range because of the way that this area slopes at the same time that you are. And so... Uh, probably even a little bit earlier because they can do fall off shots, I think. Maybe I'm overestimating the range of an Octobrush, but I think that they can probably hit you from here and you don't have a great angle. It's a very, very small window if you can hit them at all. That was a good couple of shots there, but again, they can just back up. They, they, If they back up, you can't see them. They can get behind cover to the left or the right, and you have no idea where they went because they just dropped it down below your line of sight. Um, that's, you know, why height advantage is so important. You're able to get away. That's some really good movement to get yourself out of that, that jam there. Um, and it's nice that your teammates are jumping to you. This is a great spot for them to jump. If the bamboo were to push them any further, you could just walk forward to the edge of this and, and mow them down. So no worries for that teammate jumping to you. That's some good utility you're providing them there, that being where you are. Uh, so you saw that the brush went down to the right. Um, they're, they're down there. You, you're seeing them jump up over here. So if you're going to like walk around this corner, what you probably want to be doing is getting around the corner as quickly as possible with your charge so that you can laser them down before they get any closer to you. Um, like, you want to take a wider angle. So here, let me open this up again. So you're here. If you go this way, you are, you know, they have to run straight. So you're not only putting more space in between you and them, but you're also giving yourself an angle on them sooner. Because from here, you can only hit this. From here, you can only hit this. But from here, you can already, you know, you can hit them. And let's draw those lines. So from here, you can hit this. From here, you can hit this. You're, you're already getting a lot closer to being able to, to hit them if you walk at this angle instead of like kind of hugging the wall. Um, hugging walls, blind corners, that's always going to give the advantage to ambush weapons over the weapons that have range. So they decide not to do anything because they have two other people shooting at them. Um, I don't think you discouraged them especially much. Um, they probably could have taken that 1v1 if it weren't for your teammates being there. If you end up getting one of your teammates on the left and another teammate is going in on that, there's not a lot that you can do here, but maybe you could like paint their feet for them. Maybe if it, they retreat and the opponents push further, you could pre-fire them and stop them. I would be trying to look at this over here right now uh, to give them as much help as they can get. It looks like they're they're not under any, any more stress, but... Uh, that's an idea that you could have had there. Teammate gets one down. They're at a numbers disadvantage right now, and you have about seven seconds left before you lose the game. Now we need to be painting the zone and just focusing pretty exclusively on doing that. Uh, swimming back around here is a risk. It's you, you counting on your teammates to finish capping the zone. Um, I think you, you should probably stay up there and keep painting it as long as you can. Uh, until it's capped. And then maybe you can do well. All right, not a bad spot for a beacon, but this position we've talked about, really don't like it for you. Uh, you don't have any fighting advantage of, fighting advantages over anybody. Like, this, this area that you're controlling right here, I can control that with a splatter shot. 
there's almost like no range difference between what a splatter shot can do in this position and what you can do in this position. So you're not you're neutralizing your your range advantage over them. Uh, you're also putting yourself behind walls again. You know you're not using height advantage, um, and you don't have a great angle to be able to paint the zone either. You might be kind of drawing them away off the zone towards you a little bit, and that is a really good angle to throw the rain at, so it's going to paint more of the zone. Your teammates are coming in from the right. You might be able to actually recap this here. You just need to get away from this bomb. Uh, so small thing here. I would probably keep swimming away so that the, the bomb doesn't paint the walls, doesn't paint the beacon. Also, at a certain point, it's going to just stop and, like, run into this wall. I would maybe hop up onto here and try to keep getting an angle to paint the zone. And the, the, the bomb probably just runs itself into the wall and doesn't keep chasing you that way. Uh, but because you put it there and you wanted to, you know, go up this wall, now you can't because it painted the wall for you. And you and everything. Now the rain is in the way. We've only got five seconds left. The teammate has gone down. We're still not in a position to paint the zone very much. Um... If you're just standing on bunker that entire situation, you're putting a lot more paint on the zone, and you're probably going to get the cap before, uh, you know, get, get a penalty down and trigger overtime. Um, going down there, you didn't offer a lot of benefit to the team. Um, you, you know, you, you painted the zone a little bit with the rain, but you could have painted with the rain from up here too. And you didn't really have an impact on any fights. You kind of got forced around by people shooting at you or throwing the bombs. Whereas from here, you would have been a lot safer. You would have been in a lot more stable position. You would have been able to put more paint on the ground. So um, I think the the main takeaway from this, as it, it tends to be with uh, backline VOD reviews, is to consider more carefully the positions you're putting yourself in. Um, where are you going to set up shop? You know, setting up shop here is fine. But if so, take full advantage of it. Use the height advantage and uh, take take fights that your teammates are taking on the right-hand side. Consider going over onto window more. Um, you never take this position at all in this entire game. And this is a really strong position. It's, it's the reason that you're so worried about your opponents being in this position. Um, this is a really strong place, and your teammates were taking a lot of fights on the left. So you being here would have amplified their ability to fight on the left here. Uh, and finally, you know, being in these positions, one of the things you have to consider is, can I see and can I paint the zone? Um, not being able to see prevents you from having a lot of impact in this game. And not being able to paint the zone is something that at the end, you know, could have saved you if you'd been in a better position to paint the zone from. But uh, since you were down here, you could maybe paint like this little slice of the zone. Um, and that wasn't having as much impact as the other backliners were able to, taking more traditional positions like bunker and window here. So um, here's our, our final score line here. Uh, your tri slosh absolutely popped off, and I think if you'd been in positions to, to help them out, they could have popped off even harder. Um, you did shut down the bamboo pretty well. Uh, bamboo is a really difficult weapon. It's something that... Uh, I don't tend to, pe tend to see people using super effectively um, until they get to, like, high S plus or X rank. But uh, did a good job of, you know, beating that enemy backliner. This one probably had a little bit more of an impact because they, they painted more. You can see because they had more missiles than you. And they had about the same, you know, slaying presence. So that's something to think about. But in general, you know, you take more impactful positions... I think you're going to be having more of an impact on the game because um, I think that uh, you have the mechanical skill to be, you know, hitting shots at this level, to be beating other players at this level. You just need to get into a place where that mechanical skill can actually get used um, because if you throw yourself behind a wall, your, your, your weapon physically cannot aim at an opponent. So it doesn't matter how good your aim is. Um, so that's the, the biggest takeaway I would say there. Um, nothing too much to say mechanically speaking. You know, there were a couple of little blips here and there. He probably could have gotten out of that, that patch of ink a little faster. Um, but it's mostly the decision making of where you're going to stand, where you're going to put beacons and how you're going to help your teammates and have an impact on the game. So, um, that's an awful lot that we've just talked about. 
Um, oh, it looks like I've got some DMs here. Okay, never mind. Um, so if you have anything that you would like to ask, um, feel free. You've been on mute the whole time. So um, if you don't want to be, you know, saying anything on stream, anything, that's fine. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Or if you have questions later on, feel free to DM me and I'm always happy to answer. I've just got one question. It's kind of a topic, off topic, but um, as a splatling main, is it worth at all trying to learn how to substrafe? Absolutely. Um, because it, that's it, let's say that uh, you're on a patch of your ink and somebody throws a bomb at you. Um, if you are already swimming toward that bomb, your momentum will make it so that you change direction too slowly to get away from a splat bomb. Um, the splat bomb might just splat you if you're already swimming toward it and it lands right at your feet. Even if you're on your own ink, you know, the, the turnaround time, uh, I'll, I'll show it on stream right here. Um, this will be a little bit faster because I'm using a lightweight weapon, but... So if I'm swimming forward and I have to stop and turn around, you can see I'm just sitting still for like a second or so. And if a bomb landed in front of me there and I'm just sitting on top of that bomb, that bomb splats me probably. But if I substrafe, I'm getting, I'm going from, I'm moving toward the bomb to I am moving away from the bomb much, much quicker. And that can absolutely save your life on any weapon. Um, so if only for that particular reason, absolutely recommend it. But substrafing is also just good for movement optimization. So like, let's say I want to get around this corner. If I want to swim around here, I'm losing some time because of the momentum swinging me out this way. But if I substrafe, I'm changing direction instantly. And I'm also staying closer to cover as I do it. Um, so I would say substrafing is, if anything, going to be more common with a weapon that can't quickly shot strafe. Because um, like a, a shooter gets to choose between whether it wants to fire to change directions or whether it wants to substrafe to change directions. And you know, some of the time it's actually going to be advantageous to be firing shots as you move instead of not firing shots. But for a weapon like a splatling that cannot put really quick shots out there and then move. Um, you're going to be relying, if anything, more often on substrafing, because that's really the only way of getting that quick movement. Because I, doing this and then going back and forth is definitely not as quick as doing this. So every weapon should learn to substrafe some of them are going to use it more than others, but it's something that can absolutely save your life. And, you know, I can point to places and matches I've played where I was like, yep, if I hadn't substrafed, that bomb 100% would have splatted me. Meanwhile, I'm actually one of the splatling mains who do actually main strafe more than I substrafe. Uh, and, like, main strafing is great when you can do it because it puts more paint on the ground while you're changing direction. And, you know, it can prevent you from getting your feet painted out from under you. It's not a bad plan. Um, but when you're on your own ink, like, substrafing is just faster. And it's a way to get you into, into mid quicker. It's a way to get you away from bombs quicker. Um, so definitely recommend learning both and learning when to try and use one over the other. Kind of a there's kind of a balance between the two on, on a backline. I know I main strafe more specifically just to get that extra shot out. And I know like because with me being Hydra main, that extra shot does a lot of damage. So <laughs> that's why I usually do the extra main strafe more than I sub strafe. But when you got like the missile meta right now, when you know missiles are coming at you and you stall long enough to be like, okay, they're gonna come on like right on top of me right now substrafe the heck out of there and mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure you'll survive <laughs> yeah so hopefully that uh, answers that thoroughly enough for you um, anything else uh, you know happy to talk about anything we've got you know 
We're a little bit over time, but it's whatever. I'm, I, it's better than the half hour over I was last week. <laughs> That's all I've got on mine. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, Cryo, for giving us footage to look over and to talk about on the VOD review. Um, I know it's it, it's never you know easy on the ego to to give someone something to have criticized, let alone in in front of a whole bunch of people on stream. Um, so I appreciate that courage and uh, hope that uh, you found it helpful and that you're going to be able to use that to keep advancing through the ranks. Um, yes, definitely. <laughs> thank you to you pointed everybody. out a lot of things that I didn't notice myself, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you to uh, everybody else for coming and watching the stream. Hi there, Chillfen. It's been a been a minute since I've been able to chat with you, and I've uh, got a whole bunch of people that uh, haven't seen previously. I see Fia there. Hi, hi, Fia. I see Stormcoder. I see Dylan Schmidt. Hello, everybody. Um, if you would like a VOD review like this one, a coaching session like this, then go to our community Discord server, which I am putting in the chat right now, and DM me. I am Jem. Uh, you should find me in the upper right in the coaches section there, and you'll be able to send me a message and ask for a review just like this one. And we'll talk about all the details there, you know, how do I get a recording, how do I send it to you, things like that. Um, but uh, we, we can get all of those details hashed out there. We can schedule you when it's going to be. Um, just send me a message and that'll get things started. If you're interested in learning more about the organization that I work for, uh, Bravest Esports, um, you can go to bravest.com. We are an organization that does events for organizations like schools, businesses, parks and rec departments. Um, we try to bring people together through video games. We try to run an event where you can make a friend. Um, and uh, we think video games are a uniquely powerful medium for doing that. And uh, so check out the initiatives that we have going there. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll be able to run an event for you uh, somewhere near where you live in the, the near future. But for the time being, that's going to be it for Squid School. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, I'm going to go and uh, try and find somebody who we might raid on Twitch. Obviously, you won't be able to follow along with that on YouTube unless maybe you hop over to Twitch and join us for it. Um, but let's go and head Barry. over. Hmm? You should raid Barry. Back I was going to say, let, let's go and uh, <laughs> head over and say hi to Barry. Um, Barry is a longtime member of the competitive community has uh, definitely earned his stripes um, as a member of Element R. Um, teammates with Milana, if you've heard of her, uh, they're fantastic ambassadors to the, uh, the to competitive Splatoon for players who might be new to it and want to learn a little bit more about it. Always very positive, always very friendly, and uh, I'm sure they'll be happy to see us. So let's go and head over there on Twitch. And to our YouTube viewers, uh, well, there's no such thing as raids. So uh, we'll see you around next time. Have a good